Hi, welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most boy. Enough people feel like say foreigners are better roses, <laughs> and I'm trying to tell you, it rougher foreign in some places, and for some people, it's even rougher foreign than it is a yard. You understand? The only reason why some are with there is because the money. We can get the little money. Uh, we can use the money to help certain situations back home you understand but living conditions can be quite rough sometimes and depending on where you end up living your life can be at risk as per this particular story right here now i saw the story flash by my face in the jamaica news so i decided to go look it up in the american news to get the full story and i did i found it in the new york daily news but the headline today says that a Brooklyn lunatic, just exactly how I'm going to tell you the headline, is exactly how it's written in the New York Daily News. It says Brooklyn lunatic was drunk and high when he stabbed random woman to death in a parking lot, is what sources said. So apparently the person who killed this woman was drunk and high and they randomly just chose a victim. Apparently, also, when she was killed, people were speculating that it was somebody she was dealing with. You know, people are saying, well, it must say a man where she has seen, oh my God, why these Jamaican men won't stop killing off their women. There were other comments that were saying, I guarantee you it's a Jamaican man because they are very abusive towards their women. I don't know why they generalize and throw all Jamaican men in there because when time American man stab up them woman and kill the woman and all their friends and all these things or when white men do it we don't say all white men are the same way or we don't say all American men or all British men or all Canadian men are the same way so I don't know why they try to generalize and say oh it must be a Jamaican man that she was with but that was the first thing that came to many people's mind Apparently, she had issues with somebody because this came from people that were close to her. They were speculating and saying, we have a good idea as who do it. We feel like we know as who do it. And it turns out it was not who they thought it was. Brooklyn lunatic was drunk and high when he stabbed a random woman to death in a parking lot. The headline before that says, suspect arrested in fatal stabbing of Brooklyn woman walking to work now here it goes a murder suspect was drunk and high when he stabbed a stranger a complete stranger to death without warning in a brooklyn parking lot a law enforcement source said on tuesday let me tell you something right for the people them who outside of new york city and they you're not there but i'm gonna give you a walkthrough you've never been there but i'm gonna give you a walkthrough i lived there for seven years check this out you could be sitting or standing on the train platform waiting for a train to come i'm in brooklyn i'm waiting for the number two number three train to come through so i could jump on a train and go about my business and i remember one year i saw this random this man just grab a random person and he was trying to wrestle the person because as soon as he grabbed the person the person started fighting back luckily this person had his wits about him and he wasn't the type of person to be like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And end up getting thrown in front of the train. So you have to be like really careful. There are a lot of people in the city that have mental issues. They have mental places all around the city. And some of these people roam about and they look okay, but they're not. And some of them are psychotic or borderline psychotic. So they'll do stuff like just walk up and just stab you up. For no reason or you sometimes they'll walk up and start cursing you out and you think it's just uh you know like you're like why are you picking on me for uh me and you don't have no problems fam what's going on but you're not realizing that you're in the presence of somebody that is deranged it happens to be the case in this particular case it's sad that she lost a life like this anthony wilson a 34 year old is accused of plunging a long knife into Dorothy Clark Rosier's back as she walked through a parking lot on Albany Avenue near Glenwood Road in East Flatbush on her way to work Sunday evening. Now, I've already said this. 
The United States of America, most of these cities, especially big cities, they're filled with cameras everywhere. If you do something out in the open, more than likely you're dumb, stupid, and want to be caught because eventually they're going to catch you. Not only do they have cameras on one street, they have cameras on connecting streets. So they're able to trace you like how they trace that Jamaican dude who used to work at the McDonald's, I believe it was. Um, and he went back to go rob the place. They were able to trace him coming off of the train at a different location, entering that part of the city. They were able to trace him on camera as he robbed the place. They were able to trace him when he left. They were able to trace him after he changed clothes and got back on the train to get out of the city again. And they were able to trace him when he arrived at another part of the city. You see what I'm saying? So the, all these cameras are intertwined and it is through a network of cameras. I'm not trying to make anybody a wiser criminal. I'm just trying to be a deterrent to let you know that if you're not one of these crazy persons that cannot control yourself, and you're out here doing crime and you think you're going to get away with it, times have changed. More than likely, if not now, then later on, you're going to prison. You're not going to get away with it. I can assure you that. So, moments after he stabbed her, he was caught, right? Clark Rosier's family initially suspected that a man who had been stalking her may have been responsible for her death, which is what I told you in the beginning. Because they were like, yeah, we know who do it. We have a good idea who did it. But it turns out it wasn't who they thought it was. But the law enforcement sources says that this slaying was a random work of what they call a lunatic. Who admitted, after they caught him in questioning, he admitted to drinking and smoking before he did the stabbing. He said he was high. And he said he was drunk. I guess he was fed up with life. He was depressed. And he felt like just taking it out on somebody. And she just so happened to have been there. It looks completely random. The police department is saying. It wasn't whoever the family was talking about. Is what the police source said. Completely random. No interaction whatsoever at all from before the guy seems like a complete lunatic he has a mental history is what the police department also said the victim's family says that they've never heard of this suspect before ever so it's not like it's somebody that she was dating and they broke up and he's stalking her and him can't take the breakup. And he's like, if I can't have you, no one will. You know how those cases happen uh, all the time, pretty much? That wasn't her case, right? You know how it could be a case of, yo, I like you, I want you, um, give me a number, let me come see you. And man push up himself every day and woman is saying, yo, get away from me, I, I don't want nothing to do with you. Like that, leave me alone kind of thing. It wasn't that either. They've never seen this dude before. They've never heard of this dude before, right? And he himself admitted he didn't know this lady. He was just frustrated with life. He has a history of mental health issues, yet he is not in an institution. He is out in the streets where he can hurt and kill people just like he did her. Police said that he's a random person who doesn't know her. Clark Rosier's sister, Myrtle Clark, told the Daily News on Tuesday. I'm wondering why would someone just see a random woman and just walk up to her and just kill her like that? When he was arrested, Wilson told the cops that he had been out drinking and smoking with his friends before the murder. But his statements were mostly like ranting and raving according to the police sources while he was given his statement he was rambling he was ranting he was raving didn't sound like he was in sound mind and when you think of oh i was out with my friends drinking and smoking earlier i don't want you to think of somebody who was well dressed and went to a posh bar 
or a pub and had a couple of drinks with some sane friends. We're talking about probably some street person who had street friends and they get together at some abandoned location and get loaded high and drunk. The killing was caught on surveillance video and it was obtained by the investigators with Wilson following Clark Rosier's for a few blocks before jumping out at her in the parking lot and stabbing her. Listen, they were able to watch him on surveillance, follow her for blocks. I just explained to you how the surveillance system is set up here. I remember working at a Walmart one time way back and I remember going accidentally stumbling into their security room. And I had never seen so many cameras in one room before. This is when I realized that that was going to be the way of the future. So I can tell you that these Walmarts have a camera for every corner of the store. A camera that leads from aisle 1 to aisle 2 to aisle 3 to aisle 4 to aisle 15 to aisle 20. There are cameras at what you would think is a blind spot. They are covering their asses and their assets. And they have one person or two persons whose sole job is to monitor these cameras all day. This is the same strategy today that has been employed out on the streets to govern the streets of New York City, as well as the streets of London in the UK and other places. This is the same strategy that I was saying that they needed to employ in Jamaica to govern Jamaica as well. That way we wouldn't get so many, oh, uh, shooting happened 12 o'clock midday and shooter escaped as a pillion on a yang yang or escaped in, mo in nearby bushes. We wouldn't have those kind of things. We would actually be able to catch more people. And then when we catch them, we can say that is you on camera, positively identify them. Then I would say, yes, bring back the death penalty because now we know that it's the right person and we're not executing an innocent person, right? Now, you have to be aware of your surroundings, man. And that's another note I would like to say to my audience. Like when you're out here, someone on the left Jamaica and feel like, say, yo, you come from yard and yard, rough but far and sweet. Far and not sweet. You have to be aware of your surroundings. When I walk outside, I'm walking with my head constantly turning left, right, all the way around. It's a paranoid way to be, but I would rather be paranoid and safe than to be relaxed and end up being a victim. Somebody plunges a 12-inch blade into your back, right? So it's that kind of a world that we live in. Now, when he was arrested, Wilson told the cops that he had been out drinking and smoking with his friends before the murder, but they said that most of his confession was rantings and ravings. The killing was caught on surveillance video and they watched him on surveillance video as he followed her for a couple of blocks before jumping out on her in the parking lot and killing her. She was actually on her way to work. Now, th this is why I may say, see, this is what I try to say to my Jamaican people and my Caribbean people. You know, you have your family that's overseas and you feel like, oh, they're in the big US and they're in big England and they could send back all the money for me because money grows on trees over there and they have life so easy. And once they give it away, they can just get it back and all these things. Man, listen, y'all don't know the half. Some of you know the half, but... A lot of you don't know the half. And if you've never been, you might not understand. Do you know that she was not actually scheduled to work? That's the crazy part. She was not even scheduled to go to work this particular day. Another employee called in sick. I've been around the world so much. I've actually had a job at a Pathmark before. And she works at a Pathmark. And she was on her way to work. She was on her way to work to a nearby path mark and she was walking to work and where she was picking up a shift for another woman who had called out sick. So they called her in and they say, hey, can you come fill in for Jalissa because Jalissa just called in sick. She's not going to make it and we're going to be short staffed. I don't know. Maybe you would like to pick up on the hours. Let me tell you something. None of us.
don't go to work because we love the work so much that we volunteer on our day off. No matter how the work, sweet, we still cherish our day off and some time to rest. When you see them call you on your day off, right, and you actually accept it, usually it's because what? It's because you're trying to make some extra money. And this is what I'm trying to tell my people back home that a lot of the times, this is what happens right here. People are trying to make some extra money so they can send something home for the family and still have something here to pay our bills and sustain ourselves here. So she was called in on a day when it was her off day and walking into work loses her life. Jano, if she had stayed home, if she was financially okay and she refused to go fill in no extra hours, she would have been just fine. But destiny did not have it that way. You know, the woman called in sick, they called her. She said, okay, I'll go fill the spot. And I need the couple of hours anyways. I need the extra overtime or whatever. And she ended up losing her life. She stumbled bleeding into the part mark where she worked at because she got stabbed up that close to work. She had arrived. She called out to the manager for help. They assault me. They assault me, is what she shouted. They assault me. She never said they stab me up. She never said them are going to kill me. She never said me think them stab me, them shoot me. She said they assault me. They assault me with a slow voice. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot, is what she kept saying. And then they called the ambulance. Her sister said, those were her last words. I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot. It's very hard to deal with right now, her sister said. Why would someone just kill someone like that? They didn't take her phone, they didn't take her jewelry or anything. They just came up to her for no reason and just plunged a knife into her. For no damn reason. Wilson was arraigned in Brooklyn Criminal Court Monday night for murder after being arrested earlier that same day. So like I said before, through those video camera systems, they were able to catch him the same day. And he was arraigned later on that night. He was ordered to be held without bail. His defense attorney, David, David Jeffries is his name, requested that a psychiatric exam be done on his client, which the judge agreed to and the judge ordered the psychiatric exam. Jeffries declined to comment on the case on Tuesday. Wilson is due back in court on April 8th, where they will decide what to do with him, or is he going to go to trial, is he sane enough to stand trial, or is he a complete lunatic that just needs to be incarcerated in some state-ran facility where he can get medical help um, for his mental state. But if they find out for sure that this was just a random act because he felt like killing somebody because he's a sociopath and he's troubled with, say, something like depression. Ah, oh, my problems are take me out. I just feel frig up. I just feel like I want to kill somebody just for, you know, get some rage and anger out of me. There are people like that that do that, and they're not necessarily insane. They're not necessarily crazy people like we would think, right? They look normal, they function normal, they have a 9 to 5 job and all these things. They maintain an address, they have money in the bank, they have a banking account where they collect their pay from, checking and savings. They function like normal people. There was a story recently about a realtor. A successful young realtor in the state of Florida that actually would go out, party, drink, has a lot of videos and stuff and uh, pictures on social media, you know, next to luxury cars. He's showing everybody that you can live this life too. Um, I'm living the dream life. I'm selling expensive real estate in Miami and I'm living the dream life. And it turns out surveillance cameras picked him up. And what was he doing? Driving around executing homeless people by night while being a top star real estate agent by day. What does that say to you? 
It says society has gone mad or a lot of people in society has gone mad. So I will leave you with this video to say this. Be careful out there. You don't know who is who. You never know what's in the mind of someone else. And there are mad crazy people in clean clothes that have mastered the art of pulling it off right in front of you pretending to be sane. You might be in danger. My condolences goes out to her family because I know that no Jamaican come to foreign with that as a part of our plan. We come here to work. Okay, and majority of us who come here decide that one day, one day, we will be going back home. Even if we come from gunman area and a messed up part of Jamaica, our desire is still to go back home, but we have to work so hard that we can afford to live somewhere nice, away from the drama, but still go back to the island of our childhood memories and our birth. And she just didn't make it back that way. Sad. So my condolences goes out to her family, man. I can say I almost feel your pain, but definitely I can never feel what you're going through. I imagine though that is traumatic and I pray healing over your family. All right. I'll catch you on the next video with SoFlow TV. Be careful out there. I'm out. Peace.